All right, what can you expect to pay in 2020 as far as closing costs and down payment? How much is it gonna cost me, Jason? What are the costs? I need to know the costs. Well, I'm gonna help, help show you what the costs are for you to purchase a home, what you could pay uh, in a co or for costs, to purchase a home using FHA for the medium sales price in Maricopa County, which is $310,000. So this would be kind of a, not a worst case scenario, but almost a worst case scenario. And there's some adjustments that can be done and I'll go over those as we as we go through this. Uh, but this would be kind of a worst case scenario. So I don't want to scare you. I don't want to frighten you. I don't want to push you away. But I want you, I want to be realistic with what you can expect as far as costs on a home in Maricopa County. So in order for me to do that, I've set up a little illustration or demonstration here for you to take you inside my loan origination system so you can see how I input the fee. So Let's jump right into that. I'm going to split screens here and I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit into this loan origination system so that you can you can see. I'm going to take it just a little bit further. Let's zoom in just a little bit more so we can really get to the nitty gritty on this. Now, remember, this is $310,000 sales price using FHA for financing. It will vary a little bit if you're using conforming, conventional financing, or if you're using VA. So let's just stick with VA for right now and because this is kind of a worst case scenario. So the top one here, 299, uh, the loan origination fee, $2,991.50. That is 1% of your loan amount. Because remember on FHA, you're gonna put three and a half percent down, which is $10,850 subtracted from 310,000, gives you $299,150. So that is the origination at 1%. Now, not all lenders charge an origination fee. Some do, some don't. Um, but this is something that you could look at paying as an origination fee. Discount fee, right underneath that. It says zero right here. That's because we're not buying down the interest rate. The only time you should be charged a discount fee is if you're using money to buy down the interest rate. The only time you should really be charging a discount fee. Underwriting fee, next one. I will see, a lot of times I'll see this at $990 for an underwriting fee. Not all lenders charge an underwriting fee. I certainly don't charge an underwriting fee. Some lenders do, so just be aware. That can vary too, by the way. I've seen underwriting fees as low as $600 and as high as $1,500 for an underwriting fee. So keep that in mind. Um, not let all lenders are created equal, right? Um, so next one here, appraisal, $525. Now I put that over to the POC section here, uh, which means paid outside of closing. Uh, but appraisals can run anywhere from $470 uh, as high as $600. But $525 is pretty typical. Now, one thing paid outside of closing. What is that, Jason? Okay, well, you there are a few things that you're going to pay outside of the closing in addition to your earnest money and your down payment. Appraisals, one of them. Next one would be home inspection. If you want a home inspection, which I highly recommend that you get a home inspection. Next one would be a pest inspection. Now, a home inspection... And you know, depending on the inspector or whatever, but I've seen them as $350 to $600 for home inspection. Uh, maybe there might be some more expensive out there, but uh, that's kind of the price point. Uh, pest inspection, uh, I've seen them as low as $75 and as high as $300 for a pest inspection. Some home inspectors do a pest inspection at the same time. Now, these two things are paid outside of closing. So that's cash outside of the closing costs. Okay, they are costs. They're paid before you actually close. So um, one thing to keep in mind with those two, if your home inspector finds that you have electrical issues with the property, then he may recommend an electrical inspection. Now, that typically that will be paid by the seller, not you. Um, a roof, if there's roof leaks or something like that, they'll recommend a roof inspection. Again, typically paid by the seller, not you, especially uh, if you have a good realtor. But those are costs you need to be aware of them. Okay, uh, next thing is credit report. I've seen this anywhere. A lot of lenders charge $60, upwards of $150 on credit reports. I charge the raw cost, my cost, which is $33. Um, flood certification, $7 to $21, just hit it right in the middle. Yes, we have floods here in Arizona. $15 is kind of right in the middle, as far as that goes. Uh, am I upfront premium? What is that? That's the mortgage insurance premium by FHA. Pretty unique to FHA. Um, so we'll get into that here in a second. If you want to pay cash, which most people don't, 
Uh, that, that's why I have a different section here for the cash section here. Um, but we'll get to that here in just a second. Oh yeah, closing protection letter. These are title fees, title fees. Closing protection letter, $25. Pretty standard here in the state of Arizona. Closing protection letter is letting the lender know that they have insurance and the loan will be insured against any encumbrances and any kinds of mechanics, liens, that sort of stuff. It's kind of a, a show uh, to the lender that they are ha they have insurance, uh, the title company that is. Endorsements. Uh, typical is three endorsements. I don't know all three of them. I do know 8.1 and put in, uh, endorsement. Um, there's a third one. I can't remember what it is. So my apologies about that. I'm not a title person, but average in state of Arizona, about $300 for endorsements. I've never seen that really above $400, although I'm sure it could be above $400, but average $300 processing fee. Some title companies charge a processing fee. Most do not, but some do, um, lenders title coverage, $878. That's, um, that's the report that the lenders get that show the 12 month chain of title. They show who's owned the property, if there are any liens on the property, if there are any um, any other kind of tax liens or anything like that, that, that could jeopardize uh, the lender's position in becoming first lien holder on the property. This report would show that and reflect that. Title settlement fee, that's where the title company takes and signs all the paperwork. This is where attorneys like in New York and some other states, they have attorney fees. Uh, here in the state of Arizona, we just have settlement fee. Now, these two fees, 878 and 691, they are dependent upon the amount that you finance. So they are adjusted. So this is specific again to $310,000 um, sales price. And it's fairly accurate because I did reach out to my title girl last night and she gave me these fees. So these are pretty accurate to that number. Recording of the deed of trust, $60. That's pretty typical in Maricopa County. That does vary per county. Um, but here in Maricopa County, $60 is a pretty typical average number for recording of the deed of trust. We are a deed of trust state, not a mortgage state. So a little bit different there. All right. Prepaid items. What are prepaid items? Prepaid items. And I think this gets overlooked a lot. Prepaid items are items that you pay for pre-closing and prepaid items. Um, now I shouldn't say pre-closing they're paid up front, um, through the closing. So for example, your insurance, your insurance is due once a year. Now you got to pay for the time. That you, once you take possession of the property, you have to pay insurance for one year. So you're prepaying that one year ahead. So you're one year ahead in your insurance. So that when you make your payments every single month, as you make those payments, part of that payment gets put aside into an escrow account so that when the insurance is due this time next year, there's enough money in the escrow account to cover that insurance cost. So average here in Arizona is $720. If you have a pit bull, if you have Picasso paintings or you have, you know, other kinds of valuables and you want to insure them, then that could be uh, a little bit different, but this is an average and this isn't specific in this particular case, but an average $720. If you live in a flood zone, like we mentioned flood insurance, then that could be higher because you are going to have to cover carry flood insurance. So um, now, depending on the number, when you close throughout the month, you may have interest costs because you're going to pay interest for the time that you take possession of the home to the end of that particular month. So how a mortgage works is that when you close, let's say you close on the 15th of the month. Your first payment would not be due until 45 days after you close, but you have 15 days until to make the deal whole until the end of that month. So these are prepaid. This is a prepaid interest cost paid up front. This is why a lot of people like to close at the end of the month, therefore reducing this number down to, you know, one day or no days or something like that. Now I left it blank because I didn't want to put an interest rate in there because then I'm held accountable to disclosing the APR and all kinds of other stuff. So I left that blank. Okay. But you will see, depending on when you close, you will see prepaid interest in, in, the, in the number of days. And that is a closing cost. All right, moving along. Interest, uh, initial escrow payment at closing. So you, this is something that I think uh, a lot of people don't know that they can avoid if they want. You do not have to have an escrow account. Now, some lenders charge a premium for an esc escrow account where your taxes and insurance are taken out of your payment and then paid on your behalf to the county and to your insurance agent. 
However, you as a consumer have the right to pay your insurance and your taxes on your own if you wish. And therefore you would avoid this closing cost. But keep in mind, you're responsible for it. So it's very important that you make the payments on time because if you don't, you put a lien against the property for the back taxes that are due or the insurance or not insure the property at all. And therefore you'd have forced place insurance put on by the lender because the lender requires insurance because they want to make sure that asset is taken care of in case a tree falls on it and it devalues the property. You want to make sure it's repaired and repaired properly. Uh, tax liens, you'll see a lot of investors go after properties that have tax liens on them. Those are people that have not paid their tax return or paid their taxes, property taxes. County puts a lien on the property. Once they have a lien on the property, they can foreclose. So if you're not good about paying those sort of things or organizing your life in those in, the, in that way to ensure that you'll make those payments, highly recommend getting an escrow account. In fact, on government loans, a lot of times the lenders will require that you have escrow, an escrow account. Not all lenders, but most lenders do require that. So with that, typical is two months. When you close on a house, they want to see two months put aside. That's for the, the reason for that. And the meaning behind that is because they want to make sure that when the taxes are due, there's enough in the account that the taxes are made whole. They don't want to pay the taxes out of their pocket. It's coming out of your pocket. So they want to make sure there's enough in that escrow account to pay the taxes when they become due. All right. So now I'm going to back up here a little bit because I'm at the end of my rope here. Next thing here down here at the bottom is HOA dues, $300. That's pretty, pretty good average for what insurance would be. Is the homeowners insurance, homeowner association, excuse me, homeowner association. Let's get those tongue tongue tied uh, up there a little bit. But HOA three hundred dollars. Um, that's a transfer of the HOA to put the HOA in your name when you take possession of the home. That's a fee by the association. Now, if you're buying a house without an association, of course that number would not be there. That three hundred dollars. Okay, uh, one hundred fifty dollars for notary. If you want a notary to come to your house, place of business, whatever. $150 is the typical charge for that. $175, I've seen as high as $250, depending on the notary. Um, typically $150 for a notary. You can avoid that fee if you were to go into the title company and sign in person. COVID-19 though, it could be a little difficult. Some title companies aren't taking in-person signings for fear of spreading COVID-19. So you may be stuck with that notary fee right now. Okay. So now, how does this look to, to you? So let's let's jump into, into a fee worksheet here a little bit and kind of go through it here just a little bit. So you can see a lot, all those fees that I just did transfer over into this format here. And this is where you see a lot of this stuff. So remember, POC paid outside of closing. PFC is prepaid finance charge. These are a, APR impacting fees. Now, I didn't disclose the rate here um, because, you know, legal purposes, whatever, don't want to get in trouble. Um, but just know that there are some costs that do affect the APR and the origination fee is one of those costs. The other cost is the title settlement fee, settlement fee. That's also an APR impacting fee. Um, and so is the mortgage insurance. Okay. So now, um, with that being said, let's go into, um, kind of the breakdown here. So as I said before, 310,000, is a sales price here, estimated prepaid items. Those are items paid up front. That's at $720, 200 and the 120, right? 1,040 for that. And that's what those, that's where that number's coming from. Uh, estimated closing costs. These are the other costs outside of the prepaid items. So sometimes I'll hear lenders say, Hey, your closing costs are only $5,000. Well, what are the actual costs? What are my total costs? And that's what you should be asking your lender. What are my total costs? Not my closing costs because they may get sneaky on you and just quote you closing costs and not include prepaid items. Now, in all fairness, prepaid items are equal for everybody, right? You're going to pay those whether you talk to me or talk to somebody else, you're going to pay them. The only difference is on the prepaid items is that it could be different because my interest rate could be a little bit lower than the other person's interest rate. Okay. Cause you're paying that 15 days worth of interest up front too. Right. I left it at zero. That's why it's not reflecting here, but, um, that could vary slightly depending on lender. Okay, PMI, MF, MIP funding fee, we talked about that a little bit, right? Uh, 52, uh, 35, 12 in this case. So when you add these things together, 
your total to purchase this house would cost you $322,243. Now we start subtracting some of this stuff out, right? Your down payment, $10,850. Take that out, right? We take out what you paid up front, the appraisal, $525. Paid that up front already, not charging you twice for it. And then we add the MIP, this 5235, to your loan amount, $299,150, to get your amount financed, 304,910, which is what your payment would be based on. So after that, your total out of pocket would be $17,333.50. Now, when you take out your down payment from that number, you're left with your true closing costs, okay? Now, when you take out that $10,850, you're left with like 6,000 and some odd dollars there. This is, which represents about 2%, in this case, 2% of the sales price of 310,000, which is why your realtor, let me get back to where you can see me, which is why your realtor will ask the seller to pay 3% seller concessions in a lot of cases. So that is kind of a snapshot. Remember, you're gonna have your down payment, and you're gonna have closing costs, but you can avoid closing costs if you've got a good realtor who can negotiate to have the seller pay the closing costs on your behalf, where you're only paying your down payment. That's it. You got your down payment, you got your appraisal, home inspection, and pest inspection. That's gonna be your real outside, you know, your real closing costs. However, in a tight market, if you're up against a competitor who's also offering, let me merge myself here so you can see in the bigger picture here. Um, if you're in a competitive market where you've got multiple offers, multiple bids, you may have to make your deal really, really clean, really lean. In which case then, then you want to make uh, where the seller doesn't pay any concessions or offer any concessions at all. In that case, then I, as a lender, I can pay your closing costs on your behalf. The closing costs are still there, just who pays them? Then I pay them. And how do I pay them? Well, then the interest rate may be slightly higher than what you would get if you pay the closing costs out of your own pocket. With a higher interest rate, the lender pays me a little bit of money. I take that money and I pay the closing costs on your behalf. So don't let closing costs or don't think that you have to pay all this money and all save up for down payment and closing costs um, and, and, and you know forego purchasing a house today because you don't have, you think you don't have enough money and you're gonna put it off until you have the money tomorrow to get them to, to get it. You just gotta get with the right team and the right realtor, right loan officer who can structure the deal to get you the best deal with interest rate and closing costs for your budget. So hopefully that gives you some insight as to what it costs in order to get a home in 2020. I know it's not, you cover everything. It's so complex of an issue that it's really hard for me to put into you know, just one video, uh, but I hope that this gives you some insight as to what we do here in Arizona or what I do to help explain closing costs. So with that, everyone have a blessed day and stay safe out there. I know it's COVID-19, it's you know May 2020 here. Um, so stay safe and reach out to me. I'd love to help you with any of your home needs. Thank you.